Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are post fight of UFC Paris. I went nine and four. Out and I won nine out of fourteen of my predictions were correct. Uh, I kind of missed a couple. Saint Denis, I missed obviously because of the doctor stoppage. Great first round from uh, Makano, and then uh, it, it, it's a little weird to me. Uh, I was live for this one, but it's a little weird to me that. The doc would stop it after the second because BST won the second round. Why not stop it in between the first and the second? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but it doesn't take away from the from the first round of Mercano. Mercano looked incredible in that first round. That's the reality. His striking is still not very good, but his ground game is awesome. We already knew this. It doesn't really show a whole lot. I'm not surprised that he was able to do so well against BSD on the ground because, again, that's where Mercano is good at. Again, the only thing that surprised me a little bit is how quickly Mercano was able to get to the ground and get to the mount. That's what surprised me. Um, but again, I'm not surprised how well he did on the ground. So, again, um, lost on that one. I hit on Nar Narcidine I'm Evolve. I thought it would be a finish, but I, I thought he would beat Brandon Allen. Allen got a quick takedown early in that first round, and he just did nothing with it. And as soon as I'm a was able to stuff takedowns, Brandon, Dow Brandon Allen's cardio went wee. Some people said it was because of the blood test and all these things after the weigh-ins because him and Rakan was the only one that had it happen. I don't know. I don't think that would say... I don't think that is a good enough reason why he looked terrible in the second and the third round. He didn't look good at all. So either way, I'm a I hit on that. I guess we'll go from bottom up. Jesus. Um, I was 100% correct besides the round with Chris Duncan versus Balazs. Oki, I think Oki's going to be very special. This loss isn't that bad of a loss, really. He fought a veteran who's been around the block. He's been finished himself. I don't think it's that, that crazy of a loss. Duncan is, is a gamer. Didn't look good on the feet as he typically doesn't, really. Um, and that guillotine, that was the second, I, I believe, second attempt. I think he had it a little bit earlier. And Oki went for the exact same takedown and got choked out. Weird finish. Though, I mean, Oki was asleep on top of him. It was, it was weird. But great, great win for Duncan. Got that one correct. And then a string of two ones I missed, two fights in a row that I missed. Um, Nora Cornell versus Jacqueline Cavacanti. I thought uh, Nora Cornell would do better in close, and she just didn't. Uh, Jacqueline did really, really good keeping her on the outside. Hurt Nora um, later in the fight. Jacqueline looked really good. Really good. And then the next one is Daniel Borez. Bora, I think it's Bora, versus Victor Altamirano. I thought Altamirano's boxing and his awkward striking would give Bora some issues. And really, it, 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 the fight kind of changed from the first round. Bora got a big knockdown early in that first. And then from there on, it seemed like Victor was kind of turning it on a little bit, kind of stealing some rounds. And then right when you thought Altamirano took the last two, he gets dropped, he gets hurt, and that seals the win for uh, Daniel Barra. So, great performance by Barra. His boxing looked incredible. And uh, that's three losses in a row, even though I thought Victor won his last fight. by He, he lost it by clear robbery. thought he won. And then next is Aline Perez versus Dara Zunikova. Zalesnikova. I think it's Zalesnikova. Aline Perez, the takedown defense held up early for uh, Zalesnikova. And then right after that, Perez got her down, beat her up, and got the submission win. It was a pretty easy night at the office for Perez. And then next, Taylor Lapis versus Vince Morales. I said Taylor Lapis probably wins this, but I'm picking Vince Morales because if he puts the pressure on Taylor Lapis, there's these moments where he's able to do good things. He just didn't do enough of those good things. Taylor Lapis was able to keep it at a distance, which I said Vince Morales has to change that. Otherwise, Taylor is going to win. Um, Taylor looked great. He looked great. That's the reality. Ludovic Klein versus Roosevelt Roberts. I thought Klein looked awesome. Domination. I thought it was a clear um, clear win for Ludovic Klein. People saying that Klein was fraud checked. You can't say it's fraud checked when he dominated them. That's that's not how that works. Klein's a, I mean, Roberts is a hard guy to finish. Doesn't give you a whole lot. Didn't give a whole lot to Klein. He's much taller than him. It, it just It's a hard, short notice matchup. <clears throat> Roberts looked pretty good, though. Um, Omar Sai versus Du An Jung. This is one you could say that was a little bit of a fraud check because Omar Umar Sai, when he couldn't get the takedown, 
His striking didn't look great. There was moments where his striking looked good. I thought he could get a finish at the uh, in the at the end of the second round. Ended up not, but he got a decision win. I think it'll help him long term in his career to go three rounds. But going three rounds with Dao Wun Jung, who hasn't been the same since the Dustin Jacoby fight, it worries me a little bit, especially because he couldn't really get his takedowns implemented, and that's where he's best at. And then next we have Ian Kitalaba defeating Ivan Ursling. I couldn't believe this fight went to a decision, to be honest. Ian Kitalaba looked pa patient, looked poised. His combinations looked pretty decent. His ground game looked pretty good. Ivan just didn't have enough, didn't throw enough, have enough output. His counters looked pretty decent at times, but Kitalaba, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess at 30 years old, it's not a big deal. He's changing his style a little bit, but... I, I think he could have got Ivan Ursuline out of there if it was previous uh, Ian Kutalaba. But he, he won. 18 and 10 now overall. And then Faraz Zayam for defeating Matt Favola round number three, under three minutes with a knockout. Big knee knockout in the clinch against Matt Favola. I thought Faraz Zayam would, would finish him. I didn't think he'd be a knee in the clinch in the third round. I thought it'd be a straight if he would catch him and hurt him. He did have some really, really nice straights in this matchup, like I had said previously, just because of all of, when he throws, he throws wide. I mean, we all know this by now. But for as I am, looked really good. But it was against competition in Favola, who is kind of tailor-made for the long striking of for as I am, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> and then next, Morgan Sherry defeated Gabriel Moran. Um, Moran looked pretty good on the ground, uh, throwing up some submissions, you know, but it was literally a matter of time for Morgan Sherry to find that shot, I thought. That's what it felt like to me, even breaking the slide down. It's just, when is Sherry going to find the shot? He found it 27 seconds in round number two. Big leaping left as uh, Miranda uh, was exiting, you know, big left hand. Morgan Sherry is much better than what his uh, record shows. Very, very good fighter. And then Brian Battle defeating Kevin Jossett, round number two, under four minutes. This was a big win for Brian Battle. Very, very big win. Kevin Jossett, once again, didn't move his head. And I said this in his last one against Song Kanong that if he, it, it, I learned more from Song Kanong than I did Kevin. Because Kevin Jossett, when he, he, I think he hurt Song Kanong early in that fight. And then Sankanan was able to make his way back, lost the decision, but still was making his way back, building momentum. And it was literally because in these exchanges, Kevin Jossett wasn't moving his head. He had no head movement. If you're always here and you're exchanging, there's a lot of things that fighters can do to adjust to find your chin. And that's what Brian Battle did. As soon as he realized he could put, uh, he did get caught a couple of times with counters. In the first round, he was also leaving his head on the center line, so the counter was there. Uh, I said he needed to, in the second round, get his head off the center line, throw his combinations, and then exit, or go all the way in. And he started to do that. Got countered a few times, but, you know, ate those shots. And he just started adding more and more. The thing that impressed me so much with Brian Battle was his poise and his accuracy with his, with his striking in this one. This was a big win and big and impressive performance for Brian Battle. I really, really liked this performance. And then next is uh, William Gomez defeated Joe Anderson Brito reverse by split decision. I thought Brito won at least two out of the three rounds. I don't think there's even an argument at all that Gomez, Gomez went and won this, this fight at all. I thought his striking at distance looked decent because that's what he, he's good at. He's good at that. Um, I don't think you can get taken down five out of six times, a lot of control time, submissions, all these things, and lose a fight. That's just, I don't think that's how that happens. Um, so, yeah. Great job for Gomes surviving. I didn't think he would survive this fight, so, yeah. And then North City Amavov defeats Brandon Allen. Allen, who who called the fraud check? This guy right here. Yeah, Brown, Brandon Allen, just not good. That's just the reality. But, as always, guys, I went 9-5. and five. Yeah, 9-5. and five on this card. It was a very, very good card. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for being there with me live. And as always, peace.